you always need goggles. When you're going into a dust devil, you gotta have goggles. What I suggest you should have uh, is a laptop computer. Laptop, I'm just using this. This, I can program pictures of the dust devil from the camera into this. And this is such a little helping thing for dust devil chasing. Here's your surface. All the heat comes up and it tends to swirl as it goes up. My name is Nick, and this is an ongoing story. It's a story about traveling across the country to different locations and search for this one thing that I've been obsessed with ever since I was a little kid. Dust devils. A lot of people don't even know that these fascinating little whirlwinds even exist, so I want to film and photograph as many dust devils as possible, observe different types, and research how they form. I want to take a deep look into the science behind dust devils. And along the way, maybe we'll even discover something completely new about them that has never been known or explored before. Join me on this adventure. Two years ago, I made the decision to book a flight to Reno, Nevada, rent a car, and make a five-hour commute there and back to the Black Rock Desert for three days straight. Guys, I'm staying here in Reno, Nevada at a casino. I'm just here because it's cheap. It was one of the cheapest ones I could find. I got a gallon of water because I'm going out to the desert. I got a drone, another camera bag on my back, sometimes a tripod. The people in the lobby think I'm crazy. As soon as I arrived in Reno, I quickly realized that I hadn't accounted for other weather events that could potentially get in the way. Smoke from nearby wildfires in Northern California filled the skies for thousands of square miles, and all of that smoke was drifting straight north over the Black Rock Desert where I was planning to film for the next three days. We have the first dust devil of the day. It's a little one, but it seems strong. Here it is, it's right here. Okay, let's get it. The smoke hung around all week, reducing visibility and hindering surface heating, which is vital for the formation of dust devils. As if all that smoke wasn't bad enough, high winds limited dust devil development even further. Today there are not very many breaks in between these strong 20 mile an hour gusts, so they don't really have a chance to mature. If they can mature while the wind is low, they're able to maintain their updraft, so we're seeing a few semi-strong dust devils that were able to form when the wind was very low. Right now, this is the hottest it's gonna get out here. It's about 88 degrees, and we just have to keep waiting. Looks like we have one forming just to the west. Let's get out there with the other camera and see if this thing does anything. I left the desert pretty defeated on that final day, only capturing a handful of noteworthy whirlwinds. There were still so many little experiments that I wanted to conduct as far as dust devil development goes. It only takes a tiny disturbance to get that air rising. Once it gets a little bit hotter, I'm going to take the foam board and do one of these or maybe one of these, and see if I can actually start a dust devil. But I made a promise to myself as I headed back to Reno, Nevada on Highway 447 for the final time on that last day. I made a promise to myself that I'd be back again 
to give it another try. That is a dust devil. These are all dust devils. Dust devils are the distant cousins of tornadoes and water spouts. They're much stronger and potentially destructive relatives. The main difference, however, is that dust devils are not associated with convective weather events like thunderstorms or heavy rain showers. They don't need clouds overhead to form. As a matter of fact, the fewer clouds there are in the sky, the better. In order to form, dust devils rely on strong surface heating from the sun over flat open areas. Deserts, farm fields, parking lots, meadows, and sports fields are all ideal. As the sun beats down on the ground during warmer days with light winds, a thin layer of air just above the ground becomes much hotter than the surrounding air above it. This is known as a steep lapse rate and is oftentimes indicated by a mirage. The air becomes extremely unstable, trapped under the cooler air, and some of these pockets of hot air begin to rise more quickly and forcefully in some places than in others, forming a sort of a bubble that punches all the way through the cooler air above it once it reaches the breaking point. Once this occurs, hot air from all angles at the surface rushes in to take the low pressure's place, which can set off a spinning motion as these winds collide at different angles. There are a number of variables that can set off this chain reaction. A brief isolated gust of wind, multiple updrafts converging into one stronger one, or even something as simple as a passing vehicle. Once formed, as long as the dust devil has a sufficient supply of hot air to feed its updraft, it can continue to grow and become stronger. Sometimes, much stronger. Although the majority of dust devils only reach wind speeds of about 25 to 30 miles per hour, in rare occasions, they can be just as destructive as weak tornadoes. Technically, dust devils can form almost anywhere on the planet, but most of the time they go unnoticed because there's nothing for them to pick up and serve as an indicator that they're even there. Because of the generally warm, clear sky environment and vast supply of flat, dusty surface, dust devils are most commonly observed in desert regions. Perhaps the best dust devil hunting grounds on the planet are dry lake beds. Which leads us back to today. What you doing, buddy? Come here. Come on. We made it, guys. The ground is dry. The winds are light. I think this is going to be great. August 2022. I'm back again in Nevada. Day number one is windy, but it's nothing like last year. It's only 11.45 a.m., but dust devils are already beginning to spin up on the desert floor. So we got a few uh, little dust devils just now. You can see the wind is just too strong. They can't uh, establish a good updraft. They're just being sheared by the wind. But it's, it's kind of fun to watch them move across the dry lake bed at like 20, 25 miles an hour and still be able to have that much rotation. I'm impressed. Looks like we got something forming right in front of us. This is the first significant dust devil that I've seen so far on day one. Gradually, the wind is beginning to die down. Hopefully, conditions will continue to improve. Although light winds can help a dust devil start to form, moderate to heavy winds can quickly tear apart its updraft, particularly in its early stages. It's only day number one, but within these past three hours, I've experienced more success than I did last year. 
all three days combined. That wind is a problem, you know? That wind is... <laughs> I'm getting bones. Good morning, everybody. It's 8 a.m. and we're gonna head to the desert now and try to get there like 10, 15. We got the drone ready to go, all the other camera equipment's ready to go. Okay guys, uh, winds are looking even lighter today. It's hard to tell, you know, in the desert, the winds are gonna be five miles an hour, they end up being 10, sometimes even 15, so. Um, I have high hopes for today. Let's make our two and a half hour commute back to Black Rock Desert Playa. Here we go. There are a lot of things that need to fall into place in order to see nice dust devils. This year, I've taken extra precautions to increase my chance of seeing as many as possible. Aside from the obvious weekly weather forecast outlook, which includes wind speeds, cloud cover, and precipitation, unlike last year, I've made sure to check the wildfire smoke outlooks. Fires in Northern California are once again ongoing this year, but the upper level wind forecast models seem confident that the smoke will stay away from the desert all week, and so far it has. Lastly, I'm checking the recent total rainfall amounts to ensure the desert surface is nice and dry. Back home again. All right, guys, so there is hardly any wind today. It's just light and variable. Every now and then you'll get a tiny little breeze, basically. But on a day like today, in my experience, you get those classic stovepipe features that I love so much. Current temperature, 98 degrees Fahrenheit. There's not a cloud in the sky, and winds are light and variable. Yet, day number two is off to a painfully slow start. I feel like you could kind of go crazy out here. You spend too much time. Maybe in a good way. I don't know. The Black Rock Desert holds one of the largest dry lake beds in North America, a completely flat, dusty surface spanning approximately 200 square miles. The dry lake bed, sometimes called the Playa, is home to the Thrust SSC's record-setting supersonic run in 1997, countless television commercials, and the famous Burning Man event. It's a truly unique place, unlike any other you will ever experience on the planet. Just being able to be here is a real treat, and I have to keep reminding myself that as the hours pass by and I start to become impatient. The intense heat and wide open space has a way of playing with your mind after a while. So last year when I was here, I drove around for like five hours in the desert, and I wasn't drinking enough water, and I got to a point where I said, all right, I'm gonna jump back on the highway and go to this other entrance to the playa. Right. So I did that and I just started driving out this way, you know, out into the middle of the playa. And in my mind, I felt like the whole desert playa was like switched around on me, like looking in a mirror, how everything is inversed. For about 10, 15 seconds, I started, whew, my breathing was going up. It's like, what's going on? What's going on? And then I realized, I realized what had happened. You know, I got my directions mixed up. I was dehydrated and, uh, the desert, as they say, uh, what, what is that song by? I think it's America. In the desert, you can't remember your name, you know what I mean? It kind of, it has that way of uh, playing with your head when you just see nothing but, you know, bright white ground, you know? Finally, after waiting for hours, dust devils began to spin up in all directions around me, all at once. 
Just moments ago, there was nothing, and seemingly out of nowhere, it was like a completely different day had arrived. The ground heating had finally reached its tipping point. I couldn't believe just how fast everything started, as if someone had flipped on a switch. These are some of the best dust devils that I captured on day number two in the Black Rock Desert. The following is perhaps one of the most valuable video clips that I captured during the entire trip. Two passing vehicles disturb the heated layer of air above the ground just enough to create two distinct spinning updrafts. This is the birth of a dust devil. At first I was a bit disappointed in this truck driver for destroying this dust devil, but instead it provided a beautiful illustration of what's happening at the surface. Notice the strong converging air masses feeding into the updraft to replace the low pressure inside the dust devil. Well, good morning guys. This is it. This is the last day out here. Um, I just, I haven't gotten the shots yet that I want. The shots that I had hoped for. So I'm hoping this is the day. I'm, I'm so nervous right now, you know, um, spending the time and money to come out here. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Well, welcome. Very quiet morning here today at the playa. We have some clouds overhead unfortunately with some light rain here and there the humidity is so low in the desert a lot of the times you'll have rain falling but it never actually makes it all the way to the ground it's known as verga and that's because the humidity is so low that that rain evaporates before it even has a chance to hit the ground which is something you don't see too often in the midwest i'm just going to hang out here for a while and uh, wait for the ground to start cooking Look what I just found out here, guys. This is a 50 caliber, I believe it's a 50 caliber shell casing here. It's all oxidized, you can see. The uh, brass has started to turn green. At some point, somebody was shooting a, it's either a 45 or a 50 caliber, uh, so that's interesting. I don't know if the uh, Bureau of Land Management would be too happy about that, I doubt it. So we need this to come this way, and I think it is. You can see by the mirage on the ground that it's not very warm yet. It's not very hot. And that's just because all this cloud cover has been blocking the sun. So I think that's coming though. While we're waiting for the clouds to clear, I wanted to um, <clears throat> just head pretty much northwest. And I saw this structure yesterday way off in the distance. It looked like a metal structure, so I want to see what that is. 
Oh, maybe it's a spring. I see water coming up. Yeah. And now I'm gonna get out of here because if there's water coming up, I don't want anything to do with water on the playa surface because you will get stuck. And that would be an embarrassing phone call. Well, I've been here for about an hour and it doesn't look like that clearing has moved at all, unfortunately. And I'm pretty sure that those clouds right here might be caused by lift from the mountains. And if that's the case, they could just be sitting there all day. I hope that's not the case, but it very well could be. Those mountains might be forcing the air up, causing clouds. <laughs> so that, that would pretty much uh, put an end to the day as far as dust devil activity goes, but we'll see. Okay guys, clouds are quickly breaking. The sun is heating the surface. I already see several little spin-ups here and there. So I'm just gonna wait here, set up the tripod. And this might be the day. This might be the day. The last day on the playa did finally pull through. The clouds cleared and small dust devils formed. As the sun began making its way to the horizon, I began making my way to the heart of the playa to take in the last few moments before I had to leave to head home. As filmmakers, we sometimes have this unrealistic idea that we're just gonna go out there and capture the spectacular video footage the first time. But usually that's not how it works. That takes time, that takes repetition, and of course, a bit of chance. At the end of the day, we need to remember why we're out there in the first place. It's because we genuinely love what we're filming. They're so fun, you know? It's a strong dust devil. I'm not sure why I've always been so drawn to these little whirlwinds. They seem to almost have a personality and a mind of their own. Of course, that's not true, but it feels like it. There's something special about them to me. And I think that's, in the long run, why I want to share this whole adventure with you all. Although on this trip, I didn't capture that majestic footage that I'd hoped for, I learned so much about dust devils that I didn't know before, and I can't wait to share that with you all as we progress on this research adventure. Thank you so much for watching. The adventure is just beginning. <laughs>